Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today, I will talk about a drama romance movie from 2013 titled The Great Gatsby. Without further ado, let's get started. The movie starts with Nick Carraway visiting a doctor at the Perkins Sanitarium and telling him about his father's advice, which was given to him in his younger and most vulnerable years. Always try to see the best in people. He continues that as a consequence of the advice. He has been inclined to reserve all judgments. But even he has a limit. According to his doctor's records, it can be seen that Nick has been suffering from alcoholism, insomnia, and anxiety. He is disgusted with everyone and everything, but only one man named Gatsby is exempt from his disgust, whom he has met at a party in New York. Nick takes us back to 1922, when Wall Street was thriving and bootleggers were active because of the prohibition of alcohol. He rented a forgotten groundskeeper's cottage at West Egg and started learning about banking and investment to become a stockbroker. Next to his cottage was Gatsby's mansion. Nick travels across the bay in old moneyed East Egg to see his cousin Daisy and her spouse Tom Buchanan, the heir of one of America's wealthiest families. Reaching there, a golfer, Jordan Baker, is introduced to Nick by Daisy. Tom's racism and arrogance are shown at dinner when he remarks on the expansion of the colored empire. As the phone rings, drawing Daisy's attention inside, Jordan approaches Nick and informs him that Tom is having an affair. Later, Nick takes Daisy for a stroll, where she claims that lately she has grown pessimistic. When Nick gets home, he sees what he thinks is Gatsby standing on the dock, gazing and reaching for the green light. Nick is persuaded to write a novel on his experience by the sanitarium doctor. He describes the Valley of Ashes, a barren area of New York with a billboard depicting two eyes that are rumored to represent T.J. Eckelberg's eyes gazing over everyone. Tom takes Nick to George Wilson's auto repair shop after exiting the train. George's wife Myrtle, who is revealed to be Tom's lover, enters the room while Tom and George discuss financial issues. After giving Myrtle the money to board the train, Tom and Nick head to the New York apartment. Unwilling to go, he is forced by Tom to stay and spend quality time with Myrtle's sister. Later in the apartment, after spending a drunken night partying, Nick says that he is enchanted and repelled by the inexhaustible variety of life. He has no clue how he gets home, but he wakes with a distinctly uneasy feeling that Gatsby is watching him. After getting Gatsby's invitation to his party, he witnesses the whole of New York has come to the party uninvited, but no one has seen him yet. Moreover, they gather at his place every weekend. At his extravagant party, Nick runs into Jordan, who tells him that some people say he is a German spy, while some consider him an assassin or third cousin to the evil German emperor. Just as he is looking for him, Jay Gatsby introduces himself while Nick explains that his smile is one of those rare smiles that one may come across four or five times in life. Before leaving, Jordan informs Nick that now everything makes sense to her, but she can't tell him as she swore to Gatsby. Gatsby invites Nick to accompany him tomorrow in his hydroplane as he leaves. The following day, Gatsby arrives in his yellow custom car and takes Nick to New York while denying his accusations. He continues by telling about being an heir to a wealthy family, graduating from Oxford, being a prince in most European countries, and defeating the German army in the war. Gatsby explains that he will make a big request of Nick today, and that will be delivered to him through Miss Baker. Jordan joins Nick for lunch and tells him the topic of her chat with Gatsby. Gatsby and Daisy romantically linked five years ago when living in Louisville, Kentucky, while Gatsby was a military officer. She waited for him when he was called away during the war, but she later met Tom and was engaged to be married to him. Daisy almost abandoned her engagement with Tom when she received a letter from Gatsby, but she was forced to marry Tom. Additionally, Gatsby purposefully purchased his estate next to Daisy's house in the hopes of running into her. Even though he was throwing parties just to see Daisy for once, she didn't appear in any. Therefore, he now needs Nick to invite Daisy over for tea so he can talk to her. Hearing this, Nick promises to help Gatsby. The following day, Gatsby gets Nick's house decorated with white flowers and waits impatiently for Daisy. Unaware of Gatsby's presence, Daisy seems shocked to see him after five years. Both get deeply immersed in talking to the extent that they do not know what's happening around them. As he shows his mansion to Daisy, Nick explains that Gatsby's real name was James Gatz, a poor boy destined for future glory in his imagination. After rescuing a rich man, Dan Cody, from the ocean, his life was changed. However, after spending five years together, Gatsby ended up empty-handed after the rich man's death. But later, rumors began to encircle about Gatsby where the money was coming from after being cheated of inheritance by Cody's family. Gatsby throws another party, and this time Daisy and Tom attend. She and Gatsby withdraw to a near spot where Daisy expresses her desire to flee together. 
After the party finishes, Gatsby explains to Nick that for them to be married, she needs to tell Tom that she doesn't love him. Gatsby temporarily stops hosting parties because of his distress. One day, he calls Nick to accompany him to Daisy's home with Daisy, Tom, and Jordan. It seems like Daisy is going to confess her love for Gatsby. It is the hottest summer day, and everyone gets together with Gatsby, waiting for Daisy to speak about their relationship. However, Daisy seems confused as she resists Gatsby's attempts to grasp her hand, claiming she is bored and wants to enter the city. Seeing something fishy, Tom decides to accompany her. Daisy and Gatsby leave in his car while Tom picks up Nick and Jordan. When they arrive at George Wilson's garage for gas, George informs him with tears in his eyes about moving out with his wife. It seems like she has learned about Myrtle cheating on him, but he doesn't know that she was having an affair with Tom. Tom panics because an hour ago his mistress and wife were both secure, but now both are slipping from his control. The group gathers at a hotel where Tom begins to provoke Gatsby steadily. He makes fun of his usage of old sport, alleges that he lied about Oxford, and claims that he was involved in bootlegging with wolf shame. Gatsby responds by declaring that Daisy loves him and not Tom, which puts her in an awkward situation. Gatsby loses it as Tom keeps humiliating him. Everyone gets frightened after seeing Gatsby screaming at Tom because no one has seen him like this before. As Daisy cannot control her tears anymore, she leaves the room with Gatsby following him while Nick, Tom, and Daisy head in their blue coupe. As George abuses and inquires Myrtle about those expensive pearls, she runs away to save her life. Seeing a yellow Duesenberg on the street and thinking of it as Tom's car, she jumps on the road trying to stop him. However, Gatsby tries his best to avoid a collision but ultimately strikes Myrtle, killing her on the spot. Tom, Nick, and Jordan drive by the scene and discover about Myrtle's death. Although he is visibly distraught but denies having known her well. Everyone on the street saw the yellow car they thought to be Tom's. However, he denies the allegations, saying he has just arrived from New York. As George is grieving, Tom tells him that Gatsby was driving the car, he might be the one who is having an affair with Myrtle. Everyone returns home from the scene while Nick is invited to join Tom at the supper, but he declines and decides to wait outside for the cab. On his way out, he hears Gatsby, who later tells him that it was not him but Daisy driving the car. They tried to stop the car, but everything happened so swiftly that they could not avoid hitting Myrtle. Nick turns around and observes Tom and Daisy conversing as they appear to have things sorted out. Later, when Gatsby is covering and repairing the Duesenberg, Nick runs into him. Gatsby tells him the real story, stating that he wanted Daisy badly and believed she would hold out for him. Despite his financial plight, he longed to return to her, but she had already wed Tom. Nick understands that Gatsby genuinely adored Daisy and that he merely held the parties in the expectation that she would attend one of them. The following morning, seeing beautiful weather, Gatsby desires to swim in his swimming pool and invites Nick to accompany him. Nick rejects his invitation as he has to go to the office. Before departing, Nick tells Gatsby that the Buchanans are horrible people and that Gatsby is worth more than them. Before they part, they wave to each other. As Gatsby gets ready to swim, he sets the phone near the pool so he can quickly approach when Daisy calls. Nick is too preoccupied at work and is hoping Gatsby will call with the excellent news that Daisy is ready to start a new life with him. On the other hand, we see Daisy looking at the phone and considering calling. Hearing the phone ring, Gatsby gets out of the pool, but unaware that George Wilson is standing right behind him. He gets shot in the chest and falls into the pool. Meanwhile, George kills himself by pointing a pistol in his mouth. It is revealed that it was Nick, not Daisy, who was calling before. After hearing two gunshots, Nick gets terrified sitting in the office. The media hold Gatsby responsible for Myrtle's passing and their relationship after his death. Reporters swarm his location, huddling rudely around his open coffin while Daisy and Tom are packing up everything and leaving with their kid. As Nick attempts to call them, their butler informs him that they have left. He phones and writes, but not one of the sparkling hundreds that enjoyed Gatsby's hospitality attends the funeral. Nick regrets his inability to tell the press about Gatsby's truth. Later, disheartened, Nick leaves New York and, before departing, pays a visit to Gatsby's rambling mansion once more. He remembers how they had all come to Gatsby's and guessed at his corruption, while Gatsby always stood before them. The movie ends with Nick completing his book by simply naming it Gatsby, which he later alters to The Great Gatsby. If you've already watched this movie, share your reviews with us in the comments below. Before you go, make sure to like this video and subscribe.